So I missed the boat on this one a little bit, but super straight is a thing apparently. With the representation flag of black, orange, and sometimes white, super straight people are attracted to individuals of the opposite sex, excluding trans people. Of course, that whole excluding thing has people up in arms because we're on the internet, so maybe I can parse it a little bit better. If a trans woman is biologically male but adopts the gender role of a woman, and that is how I understand it to be the case, then your average straight man, by the intersectional definition, is somebody who is attracted to people who adopt the gender role of woman, meaning cis women and trans women, regardless of their biology. Okay, fair enough. If this is the case, then a super straight man is somebody who is attracted to people who adopt the gender role of woman and have the biology of a female. And I guess to simplify it, super straightness is being attracted to people whose biology and gender role match, and who are the opposite of you in both respects. There we go. No more use of the word excluding in the definition. No more exclusion. Is everybody happy now? Yeah, I, uh, I figured not. This whole super straight thing was started by a viral TikTok. Damn, TikToks are still going viral, eh? Maybe I should start one. Yo guys, I made a new sexuality now, actually. It's called super straight, okay? Since straight people or straight men is myself, I get called transphobic because I wouldn't date a trans woman. You know, they're like, would you date a trans woman? I'm like, no, why? That's a female. Uh, no, like, that's not a real woman to me. Like, I want a real woman. No, you're just transphobic. So now, I'm super straight. I only date the opposite gender, women, that are born women. So you can't say I'm transphobic now because that's just my sexuality, you know? And this spawned a whole bunch of other people who were doing it, presumably just to troll. I'm super straight and I'm proud. Just so you know, I support the super straights. I can't believe how heterophobic people have gotten. We just want our partner to be biologically cle clean and natural, and we still accept trans people and superphobia. Did you know that there's a lot of super people who are getting harassed and getting death threats every day? Stop the superphobia. Hashtag super straight hate is real. That's what super straight means. Stop calling us homophobes. Oh look, the super straight community even raised $6,500 to benefit the Vancouver Rape Relief Society. We care, super straight. Like and retweet if you're super straight and proud. And see, this is how it works. Here's a handy dandy guide. Learn the difference and stop being a bigot. But of course, straight phobes do what all other phobes do. They rewrite history and push their own ideology. Now you're a transphobe if you only date cis people and not trans people of the opposite gender. Some of them just don't seem to understand that you can be both a super straight ally and a trans ally. Fuck transphobia. Repost if you're super phobic. Retweet if your account is not a safe space for super straight people. Stop the hate, guys. But it gets even worse. If I ever see anyone calling themselves a super straight, I won't hesitate to kill them. I'm going to attack and kill anyone identifying as super straight. I wish all super straight people an ugly evening. I'm coming for you. The amount of open death threats against the super straight community is astronomical. Of course, they outright admit that they believe super straight is transphobic because, say it with me, it excludes trans people. Super straight, meaning that you think that men that date trans women are less straight, meaning that trans women are men and therefore not real women, which is not only transphobic, but scientifically inaccurate. So if you're heterosexual and you're a man and you said you wouldn't date a trans woman because it's a preference, that's just transphobia, period. The reason that we're so pissed off about this trend is because it's definitely to make fun of us. And that is the first argument against the idea of the super straight. It's an argument that predates the super straight, in fact. It's that if trans women are women, then refusing to date trans women as a straight man or as a lesbian cis woman is transphobia. In other words, you don't see them as the gender they identify as, and therefore you are rejecting their existence as that gender and therefore you're transphobic. Obviously, not all trans activists think this way. Certainly not all trans people are saying a suck the dick bigot. But hey, that was a joke phrase just a few years ago. And with this new reaction to super straight, as well as the corresponding super gay and super lesbian, we're actually approaching that spot now. We're obviously just having a laugh here, guys, but the underlying question beneath everything ultimately is, when do you have the right to be prejudicial? Or do you at all? There is this assumption on the broader left that prejudice is always bad, period. But we already have a good idea of what happens if you take that position to its logical conclusion. As one of many examples, in Huxley's Brave New World, the futuristic society of the world state prioritizes science, efficiency, and communal ownership. And one of its mottos is, everyone belongs to everyone else. In this world, it is illegal to reject any sexual advance from anyone else, because it's considered solipsistic, discriminatory, and prejudicial. 
but to a liberal and to our liberal society which prioritizes self-ownership, property, and speech. This idea is monstrous. We have the right to our prejudices as part of the right of association. And while it might sound a little bit silly to have to say this, if you've entered into an exclusive monogamous relationship, on some level that is the ultimate prejudice. You've publicly declared that you're limiting your sexuality for you and your partner, nobody else. In order to have that kind of relationship, you must, by necessity, discriminate against everybody you're not with, in order to privilege your partner. And clearly we consider this to be justifiable, because in order to operate in the world we have to rank order things in terms of how they are valuable to us. We've even got biological brain structures set up to do this sort of thing. Again, it feels weird that I have to say this, but everything is not the same about every other thing all of the time. Once again, we're back to the conversation about hierarchy and value, because these concepts are inescapable to the human experience. And this is likely the source of the heavy crossover between trans activism and radical socialism. Their shared disdain for the concepts of value, preference, rank ordering, and hierarchy. There is a second reason that such an obvious lark as supersexual has received this kind of a pushback though. And it's that it punches a huge hole in the intersectionalist self-definition is king type of ideology. This sort of thing has been bubbling up in the lesbian community for a lot longer than anywhere else, where cis lesbians have been told they're bigoted for not being interested in trans women, where lesbian exclusive dating apps have opened the door to trans women in the name of diversity. I'm not opposed to any of these people having sex or forming relationships with whoever they want for whatever reason, but if, uh, to use the current meme terminology, a uh, super lesbian wants to go on a dating app meant exclusively for other super lesbians, that doesn't seem too objectionable to me. Remember, it's the right of association, but not to some of these people. To them, it's instead the cotton ceiling. These preferences must not be respected, but smashed through as if they were akin to the glass ceiling. People who were radical leftist feminists a decade ago are now considered right-wing bigots due to this shift in the discourse. And I gotta say, it's been a wild ride watching it all go down. But remember, identification is the name of the game. If you can pull out an entire book of newly defined different sexualities to differentiate the minute granular differences between other types of sexual preference, what is the basis for the objection to this one? I mean, in that list you'll find scoliosexual, a sexual orientation that describes those who are sexually attracted to people with non-cisgender identities, such as people who are non-binary, genderqueer, or trans, otherwise known as a chaser. All right, if this exists, why is there such an overreaction to its opposite? Is it because it's called super straight, where the implication buried deep in there is that trans women aren't women? Okay, well, why don't we just rename it? What if we called it anti-scoliosexual? Maybe we just call it female sexual, cis sexual? If the complaint really is just the meme-like nature of the name, like say with trap, then there shouldn't be any problem with the action of men actually excluding trans women from their pool of potential partners, however you want to call that action. If genital preferences do have a huge impact on your sexuality, maybe look into impresexual? What the? All right. Impresexual is a term for those who have such specific sexual preferences it may feel as though it matters more than one's orientation itself. So this is literally an LGBT friendly variant of super straight, where the sexual orientation is whatever preference you have. All right. The funniest bit is this page was made by a trans person as a non-transphobic alternative to super straight. It's already been rejected by feminist and lesbian blogs. And over on Reddit, r slash impresexual was made by a progressive who is currently trying to popularize the term with other progressives. And other progressives are instead attacking them, thinking that the idea was made as a parody by those feminist and lesbian blogs that have rejected the idea. The amount of infighting happening over this dumb shit is amazing. However, we all know why there's so much anger directed at what is obviously a troll op. The observed rules of intersectional theory have been that you can identify as a sexuality, slap a label on it, and it's now valid. Heckin' cute and valid, in fact. By those same rules, there's no reason you can't simply identify as super sexual and claim to be oppressed whenever you receive criticism of it. You can even point to any number of institutions that are explicitly pro-trans and announce that they systemically discriminate against you, not because those institutions are actually superphobic, but because they normalize and clandestinely promote superphobia through their passive neutrality. There's no standing still on a moving train after all. You can even make a blatant power play and have Donkey Kong say super straight rights, or anybody else, really. Why not? 
It's the same thing as when trans activists shoehorn in their ideology in a place that is explicitly non-political, under the argument of, this isn't politics, it's our existence. Okay, it's all fair game then. And so there is no actual coherent argument when somebody comes along and says, I identify as super straight. This is why they can only reply with either death threats or long threads that are immediately self-contradictory or end with, yeah, you can do it, I just don't like how you do it. Yes, super straight is obviously a joke, but the punchline of the joke is everybody who got so mad about it that they actually believe it was started by neo-Nazis as a 4chan op in order to literally kill trans people literally, and not just a guy making a TikTok in his car about his sexual preference. And there's been some good memes and funny burns out of it, like that girl who said super straight is a mental disorder and got owned by the dude replying with, it used to be, but we successfully harassed enough people in the American Psychological Association to have it removed from the DSM-5. Damn, dude. Whenever trans activists bitch about straight men not being into them, it honestly sounds like the radical feminists who complain that gay men are only gay because they're misogynists. At the end of the day, it's just another way to try and overwrite and invalidate somebody else's consent because you want to fuck them and they don't want to fuck you. And we've seen this sort of thing before, multiple times. Last year, it was the LGB Alliance, where some gay people wanted the T out of LGBT because the struggles that gays, lesbians, and bisexuals face are all related to each other and yet distinct from the struggles that trans people face. There is some intersectional and lefty logic to this. In one of my university gender studies classes, I learned that the history of the movement saw LGBT lumped in not out of a concrete shared solidarity, but because back in the 1950s, there was a predominant view among the cishet patriarchal society that we live in that gay men, pedophiles, transsexuals as they were called back then, crossdressers, and drag queens were all the same thing, or at least had a lot of heavy overlap. The dominant culture did not conceive of these things as fully separate and distinct, and so the activism surrounding them emerged reflecting that. But it's 2021, and nowadays, forcing the LGB and the T together artificially for that 1950s era reason sounds rather transphobic by our modern standards, doesn't it? And the year before that, it was LGBTS, making the LGBT movement more inclusive by adding S for straight. Because why not? It covers more people that way. And again, by the rules of intersectionality, these are all valid identities that need protection and acceptance from bigots. It even got to the point that Boston approved a straight pride permit, with the event's organizer, John Hugo, saying, we don't hate anyone, we just want to have our own celebration just like everybody else has a right to. All people from all communities are welcome as long as they show respect. Each of these events are, on their face, ridiculous and unnecessary. But every time one of them goes down, there is a contingent of always on Twitter people who publicly and spectacularly self-destruct in waves of unbridled rage over what your average, disinterested, unengaged normie can clearly recognize as an obvious joke by internet trolls meant to stir the pot. Intersectional activists are their own downfall. Every time someone pokes fun at them, they publicly shit themselves. And the silent majority has been watching it happen for years. LGBT activists are the reason that LGBT acceptance is on the decline. In the end, if you actually identify as super straight, you're probably just an idiot getting a bit too sucked into what's obviously this month's flash in the pan meme. On the flip side, if you're actually angry at super straight, well, you're the very reason it's gonna keep happening. Thank you for watching, my friends. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to share it around and do all of the other algorithm positive stuff that the YouTube engagement metrics like. I don't know. Sub for more or hit up my Patreon or subscribe star if you wanna keep it coming. And be sure to stick around, because I'm putting up a new video every single day. So, I'll see you tomorrow. I love you.